Hey, what's going on guys, DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the six game NBA main site on Tuesday. Before I get into the video, if you're new to the channel, welcome, my name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL sites on DraftKings. So I'm now making videos for NBA Top Shot as well. If you guys missed it, I did just upload a video for NBA Top Shot today, kind of explaining uh, you know, the bear market that we're in and also open a rare uh, pack. If you are unable to watch these YouTube videos, I also upload an Apple podcast. I have a link down below. It is called the DK DFS Show. If you're interested in signing up for premium content, I offer that on patreon.com and esports package. That includes Call of Duty CSGO. And we get CSGO slates every single day. Call of Duty slates normally four times a week. And they also offer an NBA package. I do want to thank Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this episode. If you guys are not familiar with Underdog Fantasy, they offer daily fantasy snake drafts as well as season-long best ball and playoff best ball. So if you guys are a big best ball player, Underdog is for you. After you sign up and make your first deposit, you usually go DKDFS, DKDFS, all one word, also link in the description below. You will get a money back guarantee up to $100. And finally, I just want to thank you guys for the continued support. Uh, hit almost 400 concurrent viewers on the live stream today. That is just crazy. Uh, closing in on the 9,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. So if you guys are not subscribed, if you could hit the subscribe button, would make my day. Also, leave a like button if you do enjoy. Uh, let's aim for 150 likes on this video. And as always, guys, I will be doing a YouTube live stream tomorrow to go over everything and answer all your guys' questions. All right, so uh, before we get into uh, the six game slate today, we got to look back my lineup here from Monday. Monday, it's been too good of a stretch. Had to be a tilting night. Uh, yeah, 11 games, there's a lot going on. And oh boy, there is a lot to, to, tilt, to tilt about. I am not happy. So, all right, let's go over my lineup here. Uh, Mike Conley, Paul George, Chatty Osman, Mo Harkless, Tano Gafford, Halberton, Luca, Hernan Gomez here. I can get out of the way so you guys can see. But uh, today, I guess, is this the day where coaches are going to troll us. Um, so let's start it off with Daniel Gafford. Scotty Brooks. Scotty Brooks. Not sure why he is still the head coach of the Washington Wizards. Um, one of the worst coaches in the league, in my opinion. Uh, and you are going to... So first of all, let's just explain what happened here. Robin Lopez gets ruled out. The Washington Wizards are a very annoying team where they run a three-headed monster at center. One less center means, obviously, more minutes for the other two and Gafford and Len. Gafford has been playing way more than Len. He played 25 minutes plus, uh, 25 plus minutes the last game. He's a phenomenal point-per-minute guy. So uh, what happens? Gafford comes in, two quick fouls. Okay? So I'm thinking, all right, uh, he, pull, he pulls them. All right, all right. They they must, you know, uh, they they value Gafford if they're pulling them after two fouls. So I'm thinking, okay, he's going to come back in later in the first half. You know, he'll play a shift and we'll be all right. And he'll play his normal set shift in the second half. Nah. Nah. Four. Four first half minutes. Anthony Gill. Anthony Gill. Again, one of the worst players in the NBA played a majority of the center uh, in the first half. Again, like a Broderick Thomas, shouldn't even be in the G League. He's that bad of a player. But uh, Scotty Brooks, let's play Anthony Gill at the center spot. So second half rolls around. Uh, Daniel Gafford gets his normal shift and plays like six minutes. <laughs> he played, I don't, I don't know what he finished with. He finished with like 13 minutes. And it's just like, and the game went to overtime too. I saw he like started the overtime and maybe played like 30 seconds and just nope, right back out. I, you know, I hinted, I was like, hey, the reason I, I was I was high on Gafford, I was like, hey, like I think he's gonna play 25 minutes unless Scott Brooks trolls us and Scott Bo Brooks trolled us and played Anthony Gill and Alex Len. So <laughs> yeah, not, not fun, not fun there. Uh, what else do we have to tilt about? <sighs> Paul George. Foul trouble plus a blowout. Now, this is just one of those situations where, yes, he was a complete bust. But he was super popular, and I agree with the ownership. He was 62% in the high dollar. I, I agree with that. I thought he was one of the best 
uh, spend ups on the slate. Just truly unfortunate that, again, he gets in foul trouble, uh, plus the blowout. Uh, you know, wasn't having a great first half, but still, uh, that's just one where it's like, again, a, a player in a really good spot, they can have, you know, weird games like that, floor games, foul trouble, blowout, you know, it is what it is. That It sucks, obviously, because it really sinks my lineup, uh, as well as base most of the field had Paul George. Now, it sucks because I had a low-owned Mike Conley go for 50, and it's probably not going to matter. 5% Mike Conley goes for 50, and Paul George gets 17. Uh, yeah, Chetty Osmond, I mentioned, you know, I really liked him for Valley. He was 90% owned, as I thought he should have been. I went with Mo Harkless uh, just because that was a filler play, and that was basically all I had left for. So rolled with Harkless. He has 11 at half. You know, not terrible, actually, for Mo Harkless. Uh, Halliburton, I, I, kind of surprised he was pretty low on. 28% Halliburton. Uh, I thought he'd be a little bit more popular. I used Luka, um, not the best first half. And then Hernan Gomez, again, once we got news that Adams was ruled out, he became uh, one of the best values. Surprised he was only 50% owned, but I guess, again, Jokic, a lot of people got to. So, um, yeah, I had George and Luka. Looks like you needed uh, Westbrook and Jokic of those stars. I mentioned, you know, we probably want to get to two of those four. Looks like I picked the wrong two, unless Luka has a really big uh, second half. I was surprised Westbrook's ownership. I thought he was going to be really popular. He was only like 30% owned. Again, the recency bias, right? He burned a lot of people. I misread that. I thought he would still be really popular. He wasn't. Like, if I knew Westbrook before the slate locked was going to be 30%, I would have played him for sure. I thought he was going to be really, really popular. That's why I went to Luka as a pivot. Not so much, right? Westbrook was only about 30% on. Now, sure, he did get lucky with uh, overtime, obviously. But, um, yeah, and then Dallas, uh, I luckily avoided some of the value plays. Rick Carlisle trolling us, too. He, so they're missing a good amount of players. Porzingis, Josh Richardson, a couple other guys out. And Dallas usually runs a pretty tight rotation. He extends it to like a 12-man rotation. I was like, hey, be careful with the bigs. And sure enough, he's literally using all five bigs of Powell, Cauley Stein, Boban, Melly, Kleba. Just a mess if you played any Dallas value. I feel for you, Carlisle, again, trolling us. It's just the day where coaches are trolling us DFS players. But um, yeah, that is it for the look back, guys. Uh, look back, guys. Hope you had a better night. Again, a pretty frustrating night uh, for myself with obviously, you know, a couple, uh, you know, things with, with Gafford, with the Paul George blowout. So that is it for the look back. All right, we have six teams to talk about. One game out right now. It's Bucks Hornets at 220 and a half over under. The Bucks are currently nine point favorites. So let's start off with OKC and Boston. This Thunder team, I just really dislike seeing on the slate because yes, it's a good matchup for the opposing team, but they're just so bad that the blowout risk is real like every single game you have to consider it. So with the Thunder, keep an eye on Lou Dort. If Lou Dort misses... Then there's actually a couple guys I think are intriguing. I think the two guys to look to would be the two cheaper options in Roby and Kenneth Williams. So Kenneth Williams started, um, let's see, do they have the stats up there yet? They don't, but I think he played like mid-20s minutes. He's a guy that can stop the stat sheet. If he starts again at 4-2, I think he's actually a decent value. And then Roby uh, played a good amount in the backup five with Tony Bradley out. Assuming Bradley's out again, I think Roby looks like a decent value play too. So really Roby and Kenneth Williams, I think, are where I'm looking to. Uh, I think Ty Jerome played a decent amount off the bench. Again, that was kind of in the blowout. So I think it's Roby, Kenrich, um, Moses Brown, probably not going to get two. And then like Maladon, Baisley, and Pogoshevsky are all fine plays, but it's not the best matchup. So um, yeah, again, keep an eye on Dort news. Keep an eye on Bradley news. That will change some things. Move on to Boston. So what we know is Jason Tatum's out. Kemba Walker's also out. And Robert Williams is currently questionable. So Jalen Brown with both those players out in a great matchup looks like one of the better plays at his current price. The only thing you have to worry about, I, I think it's still legit, is potential for a blowout here. Again, this Thunder team is awful. Even with the Celtics missing two of their top players, I still think there's a chance this game blows out. So that's the only thing you really have to worry about with Brown. If this game stays close, again, I think he's one of the best plays in the slate. Marcus Smart at 6.6K, assuming he starts the point guard, I think is a solid play in the mid-range. Um, normally has a pretty high floor at the peripherals, and with no Kemba, no Jason Tatum, he'll have to do more offensively. Robert Williams, if he's out, you can look to Tristan Thompson, but it's at a price point where it's just like he seems priced about right now, 5-4. Evan Fournier, I don't think I can play him even, you know, he's been limited in minutes. He has just been terrible. Um, don't think I can do it. Peyton Pritchard, keep an eye on it. If he comes on the bench, don't have a ton of interest. If he starts, then I would like him more. Um, they just, Boston has like so many guys that can throw out there for like 20-ish minutes. And there's a lot of low usage guys like Langford, like Semi Ojale, Grant Williams. Oh, like Jabari Parker is actually a good point for a guy, but right now he's only playing like 
12 to 14 minutes if for some reason he starts then i would like him a lot but yeah right now for boston it's probably tatum for me or uh brown i mean looks like a really good play marco smart in the mid-range as well and then we'll have to keep an eye on the starting lineup with possibly some other value for boston milwaukee and charlotte so great matchup here Giannis and combo looks at like one of the better spots for the slate should play about 35 minutes as long as this game stays competitive there's some blood risk here but yeah, i really do like Giannis. and with a fully healthy team the rest of the bucks i usually stay away from me it's usually Giannis for me and that is about it so on the Charlotte side, uh, LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward still out. Malik Monk, I believe, is out, or I guess he's not confirmed out. I don't think he'll be available in this one. We'll have to keep an eye on that. So we'll start at the top, and Terry Rozier, I actually like him a good amount for tournaments. Milwaukee, even though they're a really good team, they play at a fast pace. So, And Rozier, you know, it's been a little bit up and down, but the upside is there, right? We've seen it, and he has been playing massive minutes and again, a pretty high usage guy with no Lamelo and no Gordon Hayward. So I do like Rozier, good amount for tournaments. Don't even mind Bridges. He's been playing huge minutes and has really stepped it up. Uh, I would rather get to Rozier, though, of the top two guys with him and Bridges. Oh, PJ Washington. Just be careful. I'm, I'm just warning you guys, be careful, okay? Whenever PJ Washington is chalk, it never goes well. I know. For the last five games... 45, 33, 40, and 51 fancy points. He has been playing great. I am just saying, he's got foul trouble issues. There's just, you know, this game against Chicago, no rhyme or reason, just randomly plays 13 minutes. It's just a little bit of an uneasy feeling. So if he's going to be super popular tomorrow, I'm good looking elsewhere. If he does start the five, though, that makes me like him a lot more. Because when PJ plays the five, he just has a lot higher floor and a higher ceiling. Devontae Graham at 6'2", kind of just a secondary play. Should play about 30 minutes. Fair fair play. McDaniels a 4'9", no thanks. Cody Martin had a big game last game. Eh, it kind of feels like an outlier. Like, I don't really feel confident in Cody Martin, even at 4K. So, that's our map for Charlotte. Portland and the Pacers. This is one of my favorite games to target. Uh, two teams play fast. Two teams that don't play a lot of defense. We'll start with the Portland side. Both Lillard and CJ are solid plays at their respective prices. Neither priorities, but again, really, really good matchup. Lillard not been shooting well, 8 of 22, 8 of 27. What happens when it's a good shooting game? We know he's got 50, 60 plus, uh, 60 plus fans win upside. So I like Lillard for GPPs. Uh, CJ has been a little bit more consistent and is a little bit cheaper. So again, both Portland guards are in play. My boy, the Bosnian Beast, back-to-back 50-plus fantasy point games. He is really starting to turn it on, and he should be able to have his way against this uh, undersized Pacers front court. Assuming Goga is out too, it's going to be Jakar Sampson. It's going to be O'Shea Brissett. It's maybe going to be a little bit of Keelan Martin. Nurkic should be able to feast here. I like him a good amount, even at 6.8K. Now, minutes-wise, don't expect more than about 30. But Nurkic, again, can stuff a stat sheet. Love the spot here. So do like Nurkic a good amount there in the mid-range. Probably not get to anyone else on Portland. On the Pacers side. So we're waiting on Lamb. We're waiting on uh, Goga Bataze. Uh, let's start at the top. Malcolm Brogdon, Karis LeVert. No Sabonis, no Miles Turner. Really like both. Again, Brogdon, still a little bit tilted about it from the last slate. Got him at super low ownership and smashed. But the game blew out. Only played three quarters. Went for 50 in three quarters. Yeah, he is just a guy that uh, right now is the number one on offense. Stuff in the stat sheet, great matchup. Even at almost 9K, I still like Brogdon a good amount. Karis Levert, viable as well. Um, I do prefer Brogdon to Levert, but Levert, uh, again, these would be the top two guys on offense. They're running like an eight-man rotation too, which is really nice. Assuming Lamb and, and Goga are out again, like they've been running an eight-man rotation. So Brogdon and Levert look really good at the top. Um, scrolling down a bit more, so... Oh, I'm ready to. I'm already ready to tilt the Jakar Sampson early foul trouble. Uh, I just know it's going to happen. It's happened in back-to-back games that he started. Uh, assuming he starts the five again, if Goga's out, I think he's a good value because I think we get about mid twenties minutes as long as he stays out of foul trouble, which is no guarantee with him. O'Shea Brissett, the price is coming up, but I still think he gets around thirty plus minutes. He's been a solid, uh, you know, point per minute guy. Those two, I think, are good plays. Justin Howard at four six. I mean, really, you can make the argument for anyone. He came off the bench and played big, uh, pretty big minutes, close to 30. Edmund Sumner has been playing really big minutes as well, 34-37 the last couple games. Again, assuming there's no Lamb and assuming there's no Goga and Sumner starts again, I actually do like him for value. So this Pacers team, I'm pretty high on today. 
or for tomorrow, I mean. All right, Brooklyn and Toronto. So Kevin Durant had a big game in limited uh, time in 28 minutes, went for 53 fantasy points. Keep an eye on what the minutes limit is going to be for Kevin Durant. If there's like no limit for him, then he looks like a really good play at 8-3. If he's going to be limited to about 30 minutes, I still think he's a solid play because of the price. And then Kyrie Irving really has been, uh, you know, playing well of late. Even uh, had a good game with Kevin Durant in, went for 62 fancy points. So still viable at the top. He's not like a smash play with Kevin Durant in. But again, both the Brooklyn Stars, I think, are uh, solid plays. And I'm probably not going to get to anyone else. I mean, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan kind of split the center minutes. I think I'd rather take the shot on Blake, who's just been playing a little bit more minutes recently and has been the better point per minute guy of the two. All right, Toronto. So uh, keep an eye on this. This is a back-to-back. We'll see if anyone ends up resting here. Um, if they don't, then the big three are all firmly in play in a good matchup with Siakam, uh, Van Fleet, and Lowry. Of the three, again, just give me the cheapest, which is Lowry. Um, they've all been a little bit inconsistent. They all have upside. So when the, whenever there's like a little bit of a you know difference in pricing, I'll just take the cheapest one in Lowry. But all three are definitely viable. And I'm probably not going to attend anyone else. OG a little bit pricey. Ken Burt seems priced about right. That's about it for me. All right, Minnesota, Houston. This is one of my favorite games to target. Probably my favorite game to target. I love this game. Carl Anthony Towns at 10K going up against this Houston front court. Love him. Should play 35 plus minutes. Great matchup. Anthony Edwards at 7-5. Uh, firmly in play for GPPs. You know, been a little bit more up and down and can be scoring dependent at times. But again, should play 35 plus minutes. Great matchup. Like him for GPPs. And D'Lo off the bench has been playing about 30 minutes. If he continues to play 30 minutes, I think he's one of the better plays in the mid-range. So really do like all three. And let me just check in. I'm curious to see how many minutes Ricky Rubio played tonight because I'm that game went on. Um, I just want to check on these minutes really quick. Okay, so oh, McDaniel still played 34 again. Uh, Rubio only played 22. Okay, so basically... D'Lo, Cat, Edwards all play 30 plus minutes and McDaniels as well. So, um, yeah, where is McDaniels' price? He's at 3.6. I mean, if he's going to continue to play 30 plus minutes, he's not a super high usage guy, but good matchup. Again, a guy that can get some of the peripheral stats. It's the top three guys, and it's McDaniels for me at Minnesota. On the Houston side, a team I really like, Christian Wood at 8K. Love the matchup here. Uh, should play big minutes as long as there's no minutes limit for him. So, really do like Christian Wood. Kelly Olenek at 6'6". Also, again, the Houston Stars are playing massive minutes. Two bad teams going up against each other. Um, I like Kelly Olenek a good amount, and I really like Kevin Porter Jr. No John Wall, assuming there's no limit. I don't think there will be. So I expect 35-plus minutes out of Wood, Olenek, Kevin Porter Jr. Wall done for the season. So really like those three. Jay Sean Tate, probably not. And the rest of the, the, the Rockets are probably staying away from Brooks and KJ Martin were like so bad, even though they still got there that last slate. They needed like 40 plus minutes. Um, yeah, I don't think I can get to anyone else in Houston. Finally, Dallas Golden State. So keep an eye on Porzingis. Keep an eye on Jay Rich. Luke at the top, definitely viable. Um, I wouldn't say he's a priority, but should play 35 plus minutes in a good matchup. Now, again, Rick Carlisle, the rotation tonight, he ran like 11, 12 guys. You know, normally you would think with Jay Rich and, and Porzingis out, like Brunson, Hardaway Jr. would play a lot more, but Hardaway only played like 12 first half minutes. Brunson didn't play a ton either. Again, they ran all the bigs of Kleber, Paul, Melly, Boban, Colley Stein. It's kind of hard to trust anyone else. I'm not going to lie. Um, like there's there's guys that are playable. If you trust that Hardaway's going to play 30 plus minutes, if you trust that Brunson's going to play 25 plus minutes, then they'd look okay. But uh, right now uh, I might stay away. And then finally, Golden State. So Steph Curry at 10.3K continues to go for, you know, huge nights, continues to shoot well, firmly in play for GPPs. My boy Draymond Green has really come through for me the last couple of games. 44, 48 fans. Once he just goes on these stretches, right? He goes on stretches where he's really good, and then he goes on stretches where he's really bad. Right now, it seems like he's one of those stretches where he's being super aggressive and being really good. 19 assists, 13 assists last couple of games. I do think Draymond's a pretty solid play in the mid-range. Wiggins, Ubre, kind of secondary options. A couple of value guys that I do kind of like are Looney and Toscano Anderson. So Looney should play like mid-20s minutes. I think he's a safer value play. And then Juan Toscano Anderson off the bench played 31 minutes. So it seems like they want to give him minutes. He's a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. It's Toscano Anderson. It's Looney. I think they're both pretty good values on the slate. And that is going to do it for the video today, guys. So if you have been enjoying the content this far, I would really appreciate it. If you have a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload videos, you know when I go live. Uh, thanks again, guys. Enjoy the, enjoy the rest of your night, and I'll see you all tomorrow in the live stream.